The average price of a new Ford F-150 in 1990 was $13,000. Today in 2023, that same truck is gonna run you about $43,000 or a price increase of 230%. In the same year, 1990, the average American wage was $50,000. And today in 2023, the average American wage is $62,000 a year or a 23% increase. 230% more expensive with 23% more money to pay for it. In 1990, to pick up a new F-150, it would cost you about 25% of your annual salary. Today, in 2023, it's gonna cost you about 70% of your annual salary for the year. I guess what I'm trying to say is that trucks are just getting too expensive for the average Joe to afford anymore. I don't know about you guys, but I am not planning on or looking forward to trading this truck in anytime soon. I wanna drive this F-150 into the ground. This is a 2016 with 102,000 miles on it, and I plan on driving it until it's completely dead. And I think I found a way to lengthen the life of this truck. It's not every day that I'm hauling 80 pound bags of concrete around. Uh, I don't need a V8. I don't need a six and a half foot bed for 90 to 95% of the places that I drive. Usually it's to run to the grocery store to get a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread. And uh, you know that's why they call these things grocery getters because mostly the people who own these are homeowners and they may use their truck for the truck part of it a handful of times a year. I would say I probably use mine more than the average Joe as a truck, but I know that the majority of those 102,000 miles that I've put on this truck have not been hauling two by fours or bags of quickcrete. And I've got a perfect example for you. Uh, we were out camping this weekend and we went to go use the winch and my winch was dead. So I started doing some snooping around and I actually found a bolt inside my cigarette lighter on this CF Moto U-Force 1000. Thank you, Anderson. Now that I know I don't have any power to my USB, I don't have any power to my winch, uh, given what I found, chances are it's likely a fuse. But just to show you right now, I have no power to my winch. And so I need to pull this fuse box off here and start checking fuses. That one's good, that one's good, and that looks to be our culprit there. That one has no continuity, so let's pull that one out. Yep, sure enough, you can see right there, that fuse is blown. Now typically, I would drive this giant V8 crew cab, six and a half foot bed, all the way into Harbor Freight, just to pick up a spare 15 amp automotive fuse. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a little wasteful and a little ridiculous. I've got something else I want to show you instead. So this is the Wired Freedom e-bike. And you might be saying to yourself, Adam, didn't you just get a couple of e-bikes? Yes, I did. But this thing is on a whole nother level. The e-bikes that we got before were 750 watt rear hub motors. This is a 2000 watt rear hub motor. And this sucker will do 35 to 40 miles an hour. Don't believe me? Check this out. All right, let's see what she can do. This is a 35 mile an hour road. The acceleration on this thing is just unreal. We're doing 26, 30, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Keep in mind, this is a 35 mile an hour road and we are doing the speed limit. Keep in mind, this road here is a 45 mile an hour, so we can kind of keep up with traffic, but still need to be a little bit more careful than on the 35 mile an hour roads. I mean, we're doing 31 right now, uphill, into a headwind. So one of the nice things about where we live is we have a lot of these backcountry roads, not a lot of real busy streets. And as you'll see coming up here, we actually have a bike lane that we can take to and from different places around town. Right there, we're doing 39.4 miles an hour, 40. Downhill a little bit, but still 40.4.
And as I said earlier, we have these little bike lanes here that you can actually get off the main road and still kind of get around town here. Obviously a bike like this is going to be useful for some people. Some people, they wouldn't be able to use it because you don't have the infrastructure or you don't have the right type of roads that we have here. But like I said, all country back roads, a lot of them are 35 miles an hour, which this bike keeps up on no problem. The 40s and 45 mile an hour roads is a little bit more sketchy, but when you can take back roads, get to a bike trail, and this bike trail will pretty much spit me out right at uh, a grocery store, Home Depot, and Harbor Freight. I can see myself using this a lot instead of my F-150. And uh, I don't want people to think, oh, Adam at Hometown Acres, he's going green. I did not want this bike to save the planet. I mean, that's a, an added benefactor or an added benefit to it. I wanted this bike to save my truck. I want to be able to drive my truck for longer and not have to go spend $70,000 on a new F-150. Uh, and this here, every time I take this to go run an errand or something, it's keeping five miles off my truck, 10 miles off my truck. Throughout the course of a year, that's really gonna add up. So right now we are in pedal assist one and we're just doing 19 miles an hour. So let's just see what pedal assist two does. The other nice thing is it tells you how many watts you're pulling. So right now in pedal assist two, we're pulling 400 watts. Pedal Assist 3, you can hear it kick the motor up a little bit. Pull in about 775 watts. Pedal Assist 4, pull in 1100 watts. And Pedal Assist 5 gives us full speed. And we're pulling 1900 watts. And again, we're up to 35 miles an hour, just like that. which honestly is a bit fast for this little bike trail. So we'll tone it back down to pedal assist two and just kind of cruise now that we're not trying to outrun cars. So I think from my house to Harbor Freight is about three miles in the truck. So realistically round trip, I'm saving myself six miles on the truck. Going this back way is maybe four and a half miles. So it's a mile and a half longer, but I can still get there and back in about 12 minutes. I've already run this course once to see how long it would take. And uh, this bike just makes it effortless. And instead of hopping in the truck and sitting in traffic and stop lights and stuff, you actually get outside and get to see some of this beautiful nature here. We're right along a railroad, right along a creek, out in the woods. This is right up my alley right here. Now I will say this bike is probably not for everybody. Uh, it is, it's a large bike. It's got uh, four inch by 26 inch fat tires. It's a larger frame. I'm 6'5", so I fit on it just fine. But I know Lana probably wouldn't feel comfortable on this bike. Um, plus it's powerful. Now you can tone down the settings uh, so it's not so powerful. You can make this a very mild bike if you choose to, but how I like to ride is I wanna keep up with traffic on those 35 mile an hour roads and I want to get to where I'm going and actually use this as a commuter bike. So for, you know, the average person, if you're elderly or if you're not comfortable on bicycles, I think those 750 watt rear hub motor bikes are an excellent choice. But if you want speed, power and acceleration, right now I think this is one of the only bicycle frame size bikes that's going to give you that. They make some moped style e-bikes that give you quite a bit of power, but I think this is one of the only ones that's going to give you this much that looks like a bicycle and you can still kind of blend in. Let's just hit the throttle one more time. Now keep in mind, I am six foot five and I weigh about 230 pounds. So if you're, you know, a five foot eight guy and you weigh 170 pounds, like Kyle from Spicer Designs, uh, this bike here, you'd probably be able to do 40 miles an hour easy, at least 38. Nice little covered bridge. Now 
Now here is a main road that we're definitely not going to be going on, but we can still ride along the berm up here and get to Harbor Freight, which as you can see is right up there. say this bike has a twist throttle on that and I much prefer that to a thumb throttle like our other e-bike has. On a thumb throttle if you are in off-road bumpy situations it's really hard to control that because your thumb is just bouncing around and you're real jerky with it. This is a lot easier to control at a steady pace. And here we are Harbor Freight. Let's go get our auto fuse. 15 amp. Always a good idea to lock up your bike because these things are expensive and people will try to steal them. May as well get the variety pack. Probably gonna need it. All right, so we made it back with our fuse. Let's pop this guy in, see if our winch works. These wireless winch remotes are pretty sweet. Press and hold both buttons. And... Oh yeah, got power to the winch now. Easy fix. All right, now that we got the winch fixed on the side-by-side, -side, we gotta do the most important test of all. Can we make it over to neighbor Doug's house on this thing? And no, I'm not talking about going on the road. Let's head up in the woods. Here's a pretty steep little, oh yeah. I can't believe it can make it up some of these hills. Now I know our trails aren't paved or anything, but they're in pretty decent shape for doing a little mountain bike riding. Try to keep this thing kind of clean and not get it filthy in the mud there. Now, just so you guys know, I am babying the throttle right now because I don't want to lose control. Man, this thing is a blast on and off the road. You know, another thing I didn't even think of with how quiet this thing is, you could use this thing for hunting, get back to your deer blind in the morning. No exhaust fumes either, no scent, no noise, and just creep back here. I think I've actually seen quite a few people using these for hunting. This thing actually does really good off-road. It has front and rear suspension. I mean, it's definitely nothing like a dirt bike or anything, but for a bicycle back in the woods to be just ripping around doing 20 miles an hour over these whoops is uh, pretty good. As far as stock seats go, I mean, this is an okay seat. It's better than most stock seats, but I probably am still gonna end up replacing it with a a cloud nine seat that has you know suspension springs actually in the seat climb right up out of that hill too it does come standard with fenders which i'm really appreciating right now going through some of these mud puddles and I think we are just about to Douglas's property. One thing I have always admired about 
Doug's Woods back here is the amount of excavating work he has done. It's incredible. I think you'll see that as we work through here. I mean, he's basically created a BMX track or a ATV park. How he's cut all of these trails into the hillside. We go back down this trail here, you'll see what I mean. Like this right here. Look at that. He just cut this trail in. This was just a sloping hill right here. Cut that in so you've got a nice even trail. You don't have to worry about rolling a four-wheeler or something. You can just rip back through his woods. Our trails are in pretty good shape, but nothing like back here. Still plenty of power on tap. And here we are. Doug's backyard. Oh, he's mowing. Nothing worse than somebody showing up to your house unannounced while you're mowing. Let me know in the comments if you guys can relate to that. I don't want to bother him if he's busy. Well, we'll go check on the roadside firewood stand real quick. Two racks going in the front, two racks going in the back. I can use this thing to cruise over here to Doug's house and check on the status of the roadside stands, whether I need to fill them back up again or cash money out. I used to drive my truck over here a couple times a week to check on it. Yeah, I uh, pulled down and I saw you're on the mower and I told the camera, I said, nothing worse than somebody showing up unannounced when you're, while you're mowing. Oh, I'll get out of your hair in a second. I just thought I'd stop over and run over to Harbor Freight and see how that thing did in the woods coming back here. So when, how is this thing? It's a blast. 35, 40 miles an hour. 35, I would say, on flat ground. 40 if you've got a tailwind and you're going downhill a bit. So 55 down my driveway. <laughs> yeah. How much fuel do you have or power do you have left from going through the woods? I think I've got about half a battery left after going running to Harbor Freight and coming through the woods. Well, why don't you let me take this thing up down a driveway and kill the rest of the battery? <laughs> so I got to pet. That's one thing. You do not want to have to pedal this bike. It's it's heavy with those 26 by four inch tires. That's a lot of mass to turn with no motor assistance, so. And I think I'm actually gonna try and drag out all the safety police. <laughs> flip, flip flops, no helmet. no helmet. At least, hey, but I got the glasses on. There you go. All right, so. So press and hold the power button, display comes on, and then you've gotta be in pedal assist one through five for the twist throttle to work, but you will always have full power to the twist throttle. The pedal assist, is exactly what it says. One through five just tells the motor how much to give you while you're pedaling. Well, it should be like riding a bike, right? Well, I was gonna say, don't- I know, don't do that, right? Don't, don't step on it? Don't step on the pedal, because as soon as you start turning those pedals, <laughs> gotta put the seat down for you. Well, let's give it a try. Just twist it or pedal it? This thing, I like using the throttle. You can pedal it, but the throttle's a lot more fun. Thing takes off like a rocket. I hope he comes back. <laughs> Holy crap! I don't know if the uh, the brakes match the power of the thing. But... <laughs> A little bit more power than the other ones, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I got almost 40 going down the driveway and was worried about whether I'd get stopped or not. Hop up and down on that seat real quick. I want to show them the uh, suspension 
on that. I mentioned it's got dual suspension, so yeah, you can see that shock in the back compressing. You wanted the fat guy to do this, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, front and rear suspension. Again, nothing like a dirt bike, but as far as bicycle goes, pretty soft, cushy ride. To so take you back to your old motocross days? It's just like the dirt bike days there. <laughs> I saw you with your leg yeah. down. <laughs> That's impressive. I'm saying you need to get one now. I'd seriously buy one of these things. Yeah. Pretty neat. Well, I ought to let you get back to mowing and I'm going to get this thing in under a roof before it starts raining. All right. The one thing I would highly recommend. What's that? Because you get a rear view mirror on here somewhere. That's what I said on the way here when I was on the roads. Yeah. I said, you know, I'm constantly turning behind me. I really need to get... You absolutely. You know what I saw mirror. somebody do? There, there's a, a wired uh, owners group on Facebook. And I saw somebody that mounted a rear view camera. They moved the speedometer down to here and put a rear view camera screen. Uh, absolutely. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. All right, guys, yeah, so that is the Wired Freedom e-bike. Like I said, if you want the most power, the most speed, the most acceleration out of a, uh, an e-bike that still looks like a bicycle and you can still kind of blend in as a bicycle, uh, this is gonna give you the most power and the most bang for your buck. Like I said, this one is probably in the neighborhood of $2,000. I know a lot of other bikes on the market that are have this type of power and they're easily three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. Uh, so I actually went back and calculated how far we went. So it was five and a half miles to Harbor Freight, five and a half miles home, and then about a three mile round trip up through the woods and back here from Doug's house. Let's see how much battery we have left. So there's the display, wired, freedom. So we have 57.9 volts and the battery meter is showing about half. So 11 to and from Harbor Freight plus three to Doug's is 14 miles. Double that, 28 miles roughly is what you could expect to get out of this bike. Now, again, I'm 6'5 and 230 pounds, so I am a larger than average person. If you're smaller than I am, uh, you know, you could probably get a higher top end speed. You could probably get a higher uh, range out of this bike. If anybody's interested in something like this, I will leave an affiliate link in the description below, but I'm curious to hear from you guys. Is this something you would find useful? And I also wanna know if you own a pickup truck, what percentage of the time are you actually using it to haul something in the bed of the truck or using it to haul a trailer versus how much are you using it to go get a loaf of bread? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.